Okay, folks. Next drawing. This time I'm doing the um, Audi R8 decennium, or how you would, uh, or as a Latin, how you would say it. It's decennium. Decennium, I'd say so. Um, and uh, if you translate it, it means decade. Uh, and they want to trans uh, or celebrate. Uh, the 10th birthday of the V10 suction engine, which was first implemented into the R8 uh, of 2009. And as you can see, I'm starting off with some basic sketches uh, of the car itself. And uh, I, like in the former pictures uh, I, I, or paintings and drawings I made, I was telling you that um, I'm like. I kind of want to practice, I want to learn uh, to get the right feeling about, propor uh, about proportions. So I'm just uh, looking at the image I want to, um, to draw and um, I'm going to start drawing. Then I'm going to take a picture and I overlay it to, to check how, how much did I get the proportions right. So um, if you already saw my picture of the Audi TT, uh, I only try uh, need like one correction here. I, I ne needed a few more, and um, the the aim is to make some rough drawings here uh, with a pencil, and then to implement it uh, into Photoshop and uh, make a digital painting out of it. Uh, so it is a super sports car. Um, so you have a really flat silhouette and um, like the ratio from like the height of the door to the side window is like two thirds to one third. This makes it gives it this really sporty edge. So um, now you can already see I um, integrated it into uh, Photoshop. Um, here you can see how I am uh, doing all the lines. Um, First, the, I made black lines, then I overlaid them with red lines. That has a simple um, reason, because um, the program Photoshop works with layers and you normally want to, um, you want to uh, have the lines on a different layer than the white background. Uh, that gives you uh, the advantage that what I'm doing right now, block the color in, uh, between the white background and the black lines, you know. And first uh, w I had both uh, on the same layer and when I was painting on it, I was overpainting also the black lines and that's not uh, the idea of using the layers. So uh, I was starting just really um, putting in the basic colors, um, like for the body of the car, this dark, slightly bluish gray. And uh, as a contrast, you have the side mirrors, the door blades, uh, you have the, the front uh, in uh, black. And uh, the color of the car basically has um, the feature that depending on how light is falling onto the car, it changes the color. So what you're gonna see is um, in the uh, areas where there is shadow, uh, it kind of loses a little bit its bluish color. It turns more into um, like really grayish gray. And where uh, the light is falling onto the car, you still have this bluish gray. And uh, I always, regarding the light layers in Photoshop, I was, um, trying to group the layers and to name them. So uh, in the end you will have more than a hundred layers and it will be really difficult to find the right layer when you want to make corrections. So from the start on please uh, put the work into it and name your layers and group them um, so you can find them always back again. Um, this time, um, like how I structured the whole painting is uh, like doing the lines in the first, blocking in the colors and then 
uh, going into full detail and working from the front of the car to the back. And uh, what I'm doing right now, I already uh, put in the license plate and uh, the single frame grill uh, in the front has a lot of uh, little shapes I wanted to to um, I wanted to 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 shade it right now and these white lines um, they are a separate layer and I called them help lines so when I'm putting uh, details uh, I know the orientation of the details I'll just paint them on a different layer over them uh, if I wouldn't use these help lines, uh, the other lines would be completely out of order and it wouldn't look uh, like made industrially. Sometimes you will see in this painting, and that's the problem, I, I, I probably should get a, f a quicker laptop uh, with more RAM. Um, it needs time, Photoshop needs time to understand that I'm using the pen with actually pressure. Uh, means like when I'm pressing more the pen onto the tablet then the line gets thicker. And sometimes even when I was using the pen he wasn't adjusting the, uh, the thickness of, of the line according to the pressure. So um, as you, you saw like here the the sequence of, of how you should do the grill with the details was first blocking in black, black color for the whole area then I was um, correcting the whole black area with uh, like very very rough area where it is like black or uh, a little bit brighter but still very very dark gray and uh, then I was putting in the highlights. I was putting in the uh, gray lines and um, on the layer in between I put this bluish gray um, which uh, make the most part of the of the grill in the front and uh, by adding the shadow to this bluish gray pads there uh, you, you give him a really nice three-dimensional look. I will come back to them a little bit further. Now I'm doing the, the same thing uh, on, on this side. Putting in the help lines, then putting in the highlights. And uh, on, on top of this area you see first the bluish gray and then the shadow. This area as well. And then I'm already moving on to the uh, headlights. Like sometimes you had a really sharp light uh, or really sharp contours where you get a, uh, already a three dimensional effect by just blocking in like black and blue. Um, yeah, and regarding the, the uh, inner life of the headlights, you really uh, have to observe where the shadows are falling in and you you work yourself from the back to the front and first you have uh, rough forms rough shadows and you work your way to the front to the foreground with more detailed shadows And first, like when I'm doing the, the inner life of this headlight, it looks like there is no window pane in front. Like a headlight, of course, consists of a window pane in the front. But this one has no, it looks like it's completely open. You can directly look into the inner workings of a headlight. And you will see what I will use to give this headlight uh, a window pane. But first, I'm gonna finish some details here. This, these are the details you need. Like just a little, like it is a paintbrush you're using uh, where the transparency is um, related to the pressure of your pen and it gives it like this really nice look. Like uh, it, it creates this imagination of having a window pane. Same thing with the left headlight. 
adding the details. Like in a car, you have, uh, of course, always different uh, kinds of lights. Uh, you have the uh, light uh, which is used just during uh, driving, driving during the day. Um, like during the night is a different light when you want to like light, light up into the distance. When there is fog, it is a different light. You need the blinkers. All this technology is uh, inside of the, the headlights. And you, there are even more adaptive lights you can uh, get as a special equipment. But I'm not selling cars here. Um, now I am putting more details into the um, frame, which is surrounding the single frame grill. Uh, you have the three holes under the hood, uh, which is a reference to an older car. And um, I moved on. Well, I, I moved back already. <laughs> the license plate, uh, I gave it a little, little bit different color. I just didn't want it to leave plainly white. And now I'm giving a uh, shape to uh, like the, the body of the car around the front. And uh, of course, because I, I had all those lines uh, around the car, but uh, it would make the look, uh, the, 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 the car look like a, out of a comic, you know? And uh, this is not what a real car looks like. So I needed to get rid um, by rid of those black lines and replace them um, by with replace them with uh, real uh, shadows so here uh, once you observe the photo you are drawing you see how the light is falling on the car and just imagine like the whole side mirror is black but uh, it's really uh, reflecting the light so the top of the side mirror is in this light uh, and middle tone gray and the lower parts are black so this this is the huge difference what light can make you have a huge surface where light is falling on the hood you have a little nice reflection here I'm creating the the Audi logo uh, by first because it's always difficult to um, draw circles which are um, changed perspectively and uh, they have to kind of adjust on the form of the hood. So first I was uh, painting like normal circles and there is a tool in Photoshop where you can uh, transform um, perspectively the, the sign. Just uh, regarding the reflections, always be a good observer. Just uh, look exactly how the light is playing, what is the form of the car, uh, which is the reason for the reflection, and you will be, will be able to, to copy it. Here you see the, how the uh, color of the car changes due to the light which is falling on the car. This is the shadow of the yeah, from, from, from the driver's view, left side mirror, also same thing. You see how the light is falling on the side mirror and you can even see the clouds of the sky reflecting in the side mirror. These um, are, uh, it looks like air intakes uh, in the side of the car. Uh, you have those black door blades which are like a design part and uh, it's also uh, reflecting the area around it. And so I'm working my way uh, through the whole painting from the front to the back. This is a really dark shadow because um, you can imagine when the sun is coming from like from the sky then this surface which is black here where the door handle is uh, no light touches there so it is black basically and and 
like this line uh, around the wheelbase you really just need two colors like a dark gray and the white stripe to give it already uh, such a realistic and mechanical look it's it's way easier than you think to create a, a photorealistic painting uh, when you understand the workings of, of a reflection here I'm again waiting until uh, the, the program understands that I'm using a pen with pressure and um, what I was also doing is um, there is another tool it's called a path tool and with this path tool I can create uh, every form of a curve so um, I was using the path tool to create a selection. When I created the selection, this is the only area I'm drawing in. So if I go over this area, no no paint will like spilled over the areas. So I can be sure that um, I'm only painting this area, and I uh, can be like I don't have to be careful uh, about the, the the outlines. And uh, this is what I'm doing step by step when there are two separate areas which are having their borders directly next to each other. I, I was merging them uh, like at the back of the car over there. But that's an easy part. In the window you have the same thing like uh, in the door you have like a side blade. Which is causing some, some really strong reflections. Here I am doing the, the roof of the car. I wasn't really satisfied with how the, the side of the car was looking, so I was trying it again. There you're gonna see how I'm gonna merge the back part of the car. This is the roof. Basically, you see me doing this part for the th for a third time. And then I'm merging the back. Yeah, there it is. Now I'm doing some reflections uh, on the spoiler of the, of the car. Um, like the, the black parts were making way easier reflections than those dark bluish parts. I think yeah that was also due to uh, it was a different material because uh, the body of the car is uh, like metal mm, it is metal and the side mirrors and the door blades they are more of uh, like plastics and you have like a surface which is more even and which causes more simpler reflections than uh, you have with the metal here I am adding some more details regarding the wipers. Like you can use the path tool which can create these nice curves not only to make selections but also to draw lines. Here I'm adding the uh, front window. This is also important like the hood and the front part is not directly ending into the window pane those are two different parts which are even like apart from each other uh, a little bit like I don't know one or two centimeters maybe one inch um, so it creates a shadow and this needs to be displayed so um, done with these things uh, I'm continuing with with the wheels and uh, this was, as you can see, um, I don't know what actually happened here because I was doing the pencil drawing uh, with um, the lines of, of the, the wheels, at least in the front. And uh, when I was transferring it here uh, into Photoshop, those lines were gone. So I had to do the whole um, rims of the wheels again here. And it was really tricky. I uh, had to work my way through. I was first creating a layer uh, to create like the base structure of the rim. 
then I was doing the brush strokes over it and um, I often wasn't satisfied by it so I would keep like erasing it then blocking in some more color uh, trying again and like sometimes even like I would say I, I understand the program but even when you understand it that doesn't mean that you immediately always create uh, pictures which you fully like and are s you're satisfied with so you need to erase it you need to start over again and uh, it's like an iterative process which can be sometimes um, frustrating but I mean you already put so much time into your painting and hell I would not let like those rims uh, destroy the whole painting and I really like the the result so far like that's also an effect like when you are really putting uh, some work into uh, your your artwork uh, and you see how it's developing you want to uh, keep this level of quality and uh, it makes you persistent on the other hand when it's really getting good it also can make you impatient I noticed it by myself which increases my speed of drawing which again maybe lowers the quality so you need to find the right way for that now I switched over to uh, the front wheel um, I was using the green background color uh, so I had something which stands out from the black in the front uh, and where I still could um, draw in the brown lines for the rim and I really did like what the um, the car designers did here to uh, combine this bronze brass brown color for the rims with the grayish blue uh, car itself to me it's a really good fit and <clears throat> rims are also the geometric shapes of rims are very difficult to draw because it's the car is a circle uh, but the rims are actually they are not like not the whole surface of the rim is outside the circle like the the middle of the wheel is going inside the wheel you know the middle of the rim is going inside the wheel and you you must reflect these geometrical shapes in your drawing of course and the lights are affected by that and the forms of the circles and uh, this is going causing like a lot of trouble to get a, a nice persistent shape and like, I was <laughs> I was cursing over like the designers doing this rims so so complicated as, as you can see uh, I didn't have to spend too much attention on uh, the form of the the wheel because uh, the shadow of the car uh, the car was falling in a way that uh, the 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 outline of the wheel was covered. So that's why right now it looks like the tire is flat. So this rim has like even two circles uh, going around and. Here I am blocking in the black color and uh, you will also see how I will be adding the brakes to the car. First, still playing around with the, with the black color over here. was using circular shapes to, to give it this 3d look and these spades or I think you call it spades uh, they cast a shadow into the inner geometry of the of the wheel and when you when you cast these shadows it gives it a nice three-dimensional look this is the break which sits inside of the wheel um, the rim itself is not covering a lot of the wheel so you can see the the brake really good there is the Audi sign it also needs to be placed on the middle of the, the wheel 
again, I was using like normal circles and then I was using the tool to kind of transform it perspectively. And of course, um, the round shape of the wheel where you can see it has to be right because the, the eye of the observer would directly see where it is wrong. Okay, now I'm adding in some shadows, the profile of the wheel. And um, what I actually didn't do with my pencil sketch, but I added it in the end, was that there was one additional layer in the front of the car. So this was, as you can see, like my finishing up of, it, of the whole thing. Yeah, I was I was like as always you find things in the in the details in the end of the drawing and you are going back there finishing it up I think here uh, the rims didn't look three-dimensional enough for me so I was adding some lightings shadow make it more three-dimensional not to make it look like a comic and then I was signing it and that's it Hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think and leave some comments. Thanks a lot.